welcome back again to another interesting video so in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing us how to make a baby dress okay you can call it a ball gown if you like to but this is not going to be a really full dramatic ball dress okay ball gown for a baby because the client doesn't want it to be too dramatic so here with me here I have five years of tulle, okay? This is just five years of tulle. But when you are making a really perfect ball dress, it should not be lower than, than 10 years, okay? So the reason why I also have four years is because it's a small child, it's not so long. So I can cut them and join it. Even if I want to have up to 20 years around the waistline area, I can be able to do that as well. So that's the reason why I have five years here, okay? I'm sorry, five years. So... So it depends on the size of the child because you know this two net comes in length 60, okay? These two nets, the length, it comes in length 60, is as long as length 60, okay? So I'm going to be taking you guys through the process. If you want to learn how to make a perfect finishing for a board dress, this video is for you or for a baby girl rather, okay? I'm going to show, I'm going to be showing us inseam finishing like already made. That is what you are going to be learning in this project. So this is the lace fabric that I'm going to be using. And I also have a, a satin here, a doffy satin here, okay, for this project today. So if you want to learn how to make this, make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. So I have the client's measurement here, okay? So I've just used the measurement to draft out a little basic bodice here, as you can see. I drafted it up to the half length and I added one inch for joining allowance, okay? So all I need to do here, I'm going to be having like a deep V neck for the back, okay? I'm just going to make the back neckline. I'm going to bring it as low as this boss chest line. So for kids, you call it chest line, okay? So, so you find out that most times for kids' design, you have the chest line and the waistline, which is the stomach. For them, you call it stomach. They are, in most cases, the same, okay? Sometimes the same. So what I did was to draft quarter of the measurement and I added 1.5 inch for seam allowance, okay? So here's my back arm O and here's my front arm O. Then here's my front neckline. So I'm going to be bringing up my back neckline, okay? My neck is as wide as 3 inches and as deep as 2.5 inches. So I want my back to be to have a really deep V back, okay? So I'm going to also bring up my back neckline here. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be having, back neck, front neck. Make sure not to sp skip any part of this video, okay? Make sure not to skip because I'm going to be giving you guys a lot of details in this video. So now, after doing this, I'm just going to take this pattern and I'll cut out the lining. This is the lining and I'll cut out the lace fabric as well. So I'm going to be doing that right now. Hi guys, so as you can see, I have all of my patterns prepped already, okay? So this is the back. I have the back pattern here. I cut two of each of these, okay? So this is the front lining. I actually cut two as well. So you are going to be needing two of these. The front lining, I cut two, so you'll be needing two of these. So I also cut two of the back lining, okay? You are going to cut times two. So I cut two as well of the back lining. So for the skirt part, I also cut two, okay? So I cut two half circle, very important, okay? Half circle, you should be able to know how to do half circle before you can follow this video. So I cut my skirt half circle using the measurement of the child, okay? To find the waist. So two half circle, two of the uh, lining each. So here is the lace fabric, okay? I also cut out 
I also cut out the lace fabric already. So this is the front and this is the back, okay? So like I said, the back is having like a deep neckline, okay? The back is having like a deep V neckline around there. So here's what we have. So I'll keep this aside. So the next thing you want to do, you want to start working on the tool, okay? You need to have like a hand needle. I always use hand needle to do this, to gather the tool together. And you need a matching thread as well, and you need hand needle to do this. I'm going to be bringing the tool together. I'll make sure I fold it. The length that I need for this tool is 16 inches. The total length of the gown is 26 inches, okay? The length of the gown is 26 inches. I took away the half length, which is 10 inch. So I'm left with 16, that's 26. So I'm just going to cut like 17 or 18 just for mesalunos, eh? Joining allowance, then later I can trim it nicely at the end, okay? So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. So I'll just make sure I fold my tool to be straight. So like I said before, I have five years around here and it measures length 60 to the hem. So I'm going to fold it to make sure I fold it nicely, nicely. I'll fold nicely like so. So I'm going to fold, fold, fold as much as I can so that it can be easy for me to cut out. Okay, can you see? So I'm going to make sure it's accurate, it's equal. So I fold it like so. So I'm going to now find the, the length that I need, okay? I need a length of 16 inches of uh, 17. I'm going to be cutting 17. So I'll take my tape measure here and I'll measure 17 inches. So I'll cut out the first 17. I'll move this back, I'll move this up a bit so I can cut out another length 17. Like I said, this is not going to be a really dramatic ball gun, okay? So now if I cut out this second part, that means I'm going to be having 10 years in total for the waistline. So I'll cut this out again. So I have five years here and five years here. They, they both are measuring the same length, okay? Five years here, five years here. So all together I have 10 years there right now, okay? So that's another trick to do it. But if I was going to make a really dramatic board dress, like I said, is a minimum of 10 inches, okay? So this one is not straight. I'm just going to fold again nicely and fold nicely so that I can cut out what I need. So now that I've folded this other part of it, so I'm going to make sure I arrange it nicely so that it can be equal. So the next thing I'm going to do here is to cut this two inches away from this, okay? Two inches away from this. Remember, this is the, going to be the first one. So I'm going to measure this two inches away from that one. So now I'll cut. So I'm in lock equal okay so now this one is uh, 17 inches and this one is 15 inches okay 17 and 15 inches long you can see it's two inches shorter than this other one okay so now the next thing that we're going to do I'm going to keep them aside I'll pick one of the lining the half circle lining okay i'll open this up perfectly i'll open this up so remember the second step that i cut is two inches away from the first one so i'm going to bring my tape measure here i'm going to mark uh 2.5 inches away from the waist the reason why i'm doing that is because half inch is for joining allowance at the top so i'm going to mark that all around okay Guys, just pay attention. There is a lot of details here in this tutorial. 
be sewing one of the tool on the waistline and sewing the other tool here so the reason why i do this when i make a, even a simple baby dress is to is to move away all of the i don't know how to the bulk away from the waist you see some people make board dress you see that the waist area will be so bulky like it will just be so obvious that this is gathers or something i don't know how to explain that so i always try as much as possible instead of gathering a whole 20 years or a whole 10 years at the waistline you move away by two inches from the first step or one inch from the first step and take the other gathering to the other line okay so that's the reason why i'm doing this is to move away the bulk of gathers away from the waist you are still going to get the feeling as far as your lining is cut as half circle then after ruling that with my chalk i'm going to use my tape measure to measure it all around to know what i have so now i have 31 in total on that line and the waistline that we are working with for this child the waistline that we are working with is 23 inches okay so good i have 23 inches here I have 23 inches here and I have 30 inches here. The waistline measures 23 and this measures 31 inches just now, right? So the reason why I have to know this measurement because that is what is going to allow me to know how to gather my tool. Because now that this waistline is 23 inches, I'm going to be gathering my tool to be 23 inches. Now that this one is 31 inches, I'm going to be gathering my tool to be 31 inches. It's that simple. Very, very important, guys. Don't miss that. So now that I've done this, I'm going to fold this. I'll keep it aside. Then I'll start to work on the tool. Remember, we need 31 inches for the short one, okay? This is the shorter one. And we need 23 inches for the longer one. So I'll take my tape, I'll take my hand needle. Then I'll pick up my thread. I'm going to be cutting my thread exactly that inches, just plus one inch. It's easier like that, but whichever way you like it, you can do it. So I'm just going to double my thread here. I'll pick my hand needle, then I'll fix in. So I always like to cut my thread with the same accurate measurement so I don't have to start looking for how to put them together, trying to space it, to arrange it, no. I'll just cut my thread exactly the the place where I want to sew my tool, exactly the amount, there may be one inch extra for to tie it, okay? So now that I'm bringing out my thread, I'm going to first gather the shorter one, which is going to be 31 inches. So I'm going to be cutting like 32 here, but I'll still show us what to do when we're sewing. Okay, because we're going to need to be we'll move away from the sewing allowance and when we're joining the half circle together. But for now, let's just stick to that 31 inches as the measurement. So I'm going to measure all the way 31, 32. I'm adding one inch there so I can tie it, okay? So I'm just tying it there. So I'm just making a knot. Very important, guys. So I have exactly 31 inches, which I need to gather this short one. I'll keep my thread aside, then I'll start to gather. So let me just do a little so but i'm going to be doing all of them off camera okay <laughs> so I, I don't want to bore you guys with the gathering so if i just if I start gathering this first one remember we have five years here and we have another five years there so it's all together 10 years for the second layer and all together 10 years for the first line for the first layer that will be at the waistline so i'll just gather and once i finish with this one i'll pick up the other one and i'll continue gathering okay so i'm, I'm going to be using my hand needle to do my gathers Like so I'll just keep going and going and going until I get to the other end, okay? So I prefer to use my needles to gather my tool. So whatever you prefer, if you know you can use your sewing machine, also use that. But I get bored using the sewing machine. I always prefer to use my hand needle because I can do this very, very fast with the hand needle. So it saves me more time. So I don't want to go through the stress of my thread breaking from the needle or whatever the case may be. So I'll just keep doing this with my hand going. So hi guys. So as you can see, I've gathered the two together with my hand needle, okay? So we have the shorter one and we have the longer one here. They are both gathered. So this is how I'm going to be sewing it to the sewing machine. What I'm going to be doing now, 
I'm going to place them both. I'm going to sew them to this line, okay? So one of them is going to stay on this line. Okay, I'm going to sew it round, round, round. So if I'm going to sew it, this is what I'm going to do because this is the short one that should stay on the second line, okay? Can you guys see? So this I'm going to be stitching it together with my sewing machine. Okay, on that line. Okay, so I'll pick up the other one. Is the one that is going to stay on top. Can you see? So this is very important, guys. So I've just succeeded in moving all of the bulk gathering away from the waist. I don't know if you guys can see this clearly. Okay, so this is how I'm going to be sewing them both. So I'll sew this one to the waistline and I'll sew the other one to the other second line at the bottom. So now I've sewn the first step already, okay? I've sewn the first step to the waist as you can see here. Let me position the camera very well so that we can, we can see clearly. So now the first step is sewn to the waist. So now the next thing we're going to do, you can see the other line there is still visible. So we're going to be sewing the other step to this to the line that we marked out already before okay so if you want to sew the other step what you do is so you don't place it like this can you see so just the way we sewed the first step you are not going to be sewing the second step so normally you know when you sew you are supposed to just sew like this but we are not going to be sewing this like this you are going to flip it over you are going to bring it towards this part so just to take off the rough edge okay so we are going to be sewing it like this okay so we'll go to the sewing machine now so i'll just illustrate a little bit for you guys how to sew so you are going to flip it over so that by the time you sew and you turn it over the rough edge will go underneath okay nobody's going to see any rough edge of the second step so i'll put on my sewing machine Guys, I'm a little bit under the weather this morning <laughs> because it's almost Christmas and um, the Amatan, I think the Amatan is getting serious around here. So I'm going to be placing it like so. So as you can see, I'm moving away from my zip allowance, okay? I'm not starting my gathering from the hand. I'm moving away from my zip allowance. I hope you guys can see that. So I'm going to place this here as well i'm going to be starting here so you can see instead of bringing it down i'm sewing it towards the top okay so i'm just going to place my presser foot and i'll continue sewing so i moved away from my zip allowance okay that's very important so you're just going to keep sewing along the line you can see my line is still really visible there around there so i'm just going to keep sewing until you get to the other end okay when you get to the under other end as well you are going to move away from your zip allowance so, so you just keep going and going and going So you just have to be <clears throat> just have to be careful guys don't rush this okay just take it nice and easy try to be spreading your gathers across now we're done I hope you guys can see this clearly okay so when you, by the time you flip it over i'll put up my sewing machine okay this is what you have okay so the rough edge has gone underneath though i'm still going to be trimming that a little bit so this is what you should have okay for your second step so i'll show us properly 
Okay, guys. So this is it, guys. This is can you, if you, as you can see, I've moved away from my zip allowance around there. I didn't allow my gathers to get to the end, so I did the same thing on the other side. You are not going to <clears throat> allow your gathers to get to the end. You are moving away from your zip allowance. Okay. So now that we have the first step, and we have also sewn the second step. Okay. So this is what the other step looks like. That was the reason I asked us to sew it the way we just did okay so you are going to not have any rough edge showing out around there okay so you are going to do like this you can see the rough edge is in underneath to sew before you bring it down okay so that's the trick you are going to use so even if you are going to have multiple layers of tool this is how you are going to sew them okay to create a more dramatic ball dress okay so now all our gathers are done so we are going to proceed to work on the top area. So here is the up of the top. So I will just show us what I did. So I saw the lining separate. We are going to be sewing the lining separate from the main fabric, okay? So here is the main fabric. Like I said, remember we cut out two lining already, okay? So one of the lining is going with the lace. One of the lining is going to go with the lace like so together. So I only just join them at the shoulders, okay? I only just join them at the shoulder. So the second line is also going to be joined like this separately. And you're also just going to join it at the shoulder only, okay? So that's what you're going to do. So you bring them together, right side facing. Because we are going to be sewing, sewing like an inseam finishing, okay? You bring them together right side facing. So I'm still trying to contemplate if I want to add sleeve to this baby dress. I'm still trying to contemplate. Because if I'm going to be adding sleeve, now is the time for me to add my sleeve. So that my sleeve can also have the inseam finishing around here, okay? So now, I'm just going to pin them together at the shoulder. So I'm going to place them right side facing each other and you pin them together at the shoulder. So are going to be doing this so if you want to sew now the way we are going to be sewing this dress we're going to close the arm o, okay if i like is a sleeveless you are going to close the arm o as well we're going to close the neckline all the way from the zip allowance and close the neckline okay <coughs> so, so that's exactly the first thing we're going to do we're closing the arm o and we're closing the neckline just those two parts for now So you close the both arm all and you close your neckline and all the way from the back. So I'm closing the other arm all right now. And don't forget to lock your stitch and at the beginning at the end. And make sure you are catching all layers, very important. Right now I have three layers here. I'm, going, I'm making sure that I'm catching all of the layers, okay? Now that we have sewn the both arm all together, okay? I've closed the arm all and I've closed this one. So now it's time for me to close the neckline. I am going to make sure you have sewn accurately that they are matching up 
around the shoulder seam okay so i'm going to start closing from here just the neckline i'm not closing the area where i'm going to be sewing my zip okay So I've sewn all of those parts and I'm going to notch. So just take your scissors and notch slightly, okay? So when you are dealing with curves, you need to notch so that it can relax, okay? I'm also going to be notching the armhole area as well. Careful when you notch, make sure not to cut through your, your seam, okay? So now that I've done this, I hope you guys have seen what I'm doing. You are going to now flip it over, okay? So you are going to just put your hand through like so. So I'll do, I'll, I'll do it from the front side. I hope you guys have seen this. Good. So I'm going to put my hand through, then I'm going to pick the back one, you are going to now bring it to the front, okay? You have to just be careful when you do this. Okay. Now that part is out so i'm going to do the other side as well so just watch guys watch what i'm doing here okay so here's the back and here's the front so i'm just going to put my hand through the arm or through the shoulder i'm putting my hand through the shoulder to pick up the other one so that i can pass through the shoulder to come out so that i can turn out to the right side okay so you are going to gently bring this out Okay, so the next thing you will need to do now is to take it to your ironing board and give it a really, really good press, okay? So you can see that our armhole is nicely closed. Our neckline is neatly closed as well, okay? They are both neatly closed. So I'm going to be taking it now to my ironing board. I'll give it a good press. Then we'll come back to shape the side seam, okay? Then we'll come back to sew the side seam. So just pay attention to every little details that I give us here. This is going to help you to do a perfect inseam finishing when you make a baby dress, okay? So I'm going to take it to my ironing board to keep it down. After giving it a good press, the next thing you do is to shape the side and go sew the side seam okay so i'm just going to show us how to do that so here's the good the wrong side okay so here's how the wrong side is looking okay so and this is the good side so you are going to be sewing lining to lining and the main fabric to the main fabric so i'll close them both like this so i'm going to be picking up the lining okay the lining of the front i'll pick, keep, keep, keep it aside i'll match them both i also pick the lining for the back okay I hope you guys are seeing me. So here is the lining. Remember, the lace has a lining going together with it as one, as one fabric. So I'm going to pick it like this. So this is the lining, okay? So this is how I'm going to be shaping the side seam. 
Can you see? So I'll make sure they are joining together. I'll pin it down at the ambo area. There. So that it'll be don't match. So I'll do the other side for you guys to see. So in case you didn't get that part correctly. So here's the front. Okay. Here's the back. And here's the front, okay? As you can see, they are not sewn together at the side seam already. So now we're going to be sewing it. So I'm going to be picking the main fabric, okay? Open it like so. So I also pick the main fabric for the back. I'll open it, then I'll place them together here. So now it's going to line it to lining and the main fabric together with the main fabric, like so. So I'll pin it. Okay, can you see? So if I want to shape it now, this is how I'm going to be shaping it. I'm going to sew all the way down across like so. So I can start imputing my measurement so I can sew it all the way down. So I'm just going to put a couple of more pins around there, okay? So I'm just going to be marking out, I'm just going to be chalking out my seam allowance, okay? So I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll chalk out my seam allowance as I'll sew. So I'll come to this other part, the other side. I'm also going to be chucking out my same allowance. So and when you sew, make sure you're catching all the layers, okay? So I have a 1.5 inch seam allowance. That's exactly what I'm going to be taking out. So now I'll sew and I'll sew on the other side as well. So let's go to the sewing machine. So and when you sew, just make sure that you're catching all layers, okay? Remember, we have almost four layers now, okay? You can put a couple of more pins to guide you. So I'm going to place them. And make sure there's a pin at this seam area, this ammo area. There's a pin there so that it, it can be accurate around there, okay? Even if you don't put pin any other place in another place sorry <laughs> so but there has to be a pin there okay so that the both arm all can match up nice and properly so i'll take off my pins so now that the both sides are sewn so the next thing I need to do now is to flip them over to the good side, okay? So I'm just going to turn it over like so to the good side. So as you can see, there's no rough edge whatsoever. I'll also take this to my sewing machine and I'll give it a good press. So the only part where we have rough edge at the moment now is just the zip area, okay? It's just the zip area. So that one is going to be, we're going to be sewing the zip last. So it's just the zip area. So the inside is looking flawless now as you can see it, okay? So now I'm going to also give it a little, a good press. Then we'll work on the skirt. We cannot join it to the skirt part now. So guys, this is what we have after pressing it, okay? So this is the wrong side. So you can see everything is laying flat and nice, okay? Make sure to give us a really good press as well. So here's the wrong, the good, the front side, okay? So, and I'm going to open it for you guys to see. So as you can see at the moment, we don't have any rough edge at all. Everywhere is nicely closed. So I'm going to turn the front, the good side also for us to see. So we still have our zip allowance area open, okay? 
it's just the zip allowance that has the rough edge now but we're going to be dealing with that later the zip is going to be the last thing that we're going to be fixing so here is the front so the next thing that we're going to do now is to bring it to the skirt area and join it together to the skirt but i'm thinking of doing make creating a design here okay i just want to put like a waistband so i'm going to measure the half length to see what i'm going to be taking away okay okay maybe that one I, I can do that one later i have another way to do it so i have one inch seam allowance here so i'm going to bring the waist the skirt area okay so i'll fold the skirt over i'll look for the midpoint so i'll notch the middle so i'll do the same for this one i'll fold it over so i'll make sure i'm folding it nice and accurate so that I can look for the midpoint to notch before I join them both together. So I'm going to notch the midpoint there as well. So, so I'm going to be placing them together at the notch, okay? So I'm going to be placing them both together at the notch. So I'll bring this front like this. So I'm placing it right side facing, okay? So, and I'm going to be moving the lining away. I'm not going to be sewing it together with the lining. Can you see? I move that away. Just pay attention to this part. I'm moving the lining away at the moment. So, yes, the lining together with the upper part. But I, if I'm joining it to the skirt, I'm moving the lining totally away from it. I'm not adding the lining to it. So, I move the lining away. Then I'll pin those parts together. So I'm going to be pinning the both notch, the notch from the top and the notch on the skirt, pin them together at the middle. Then I can sew all the way to the other end, okay? So as you can see, they are both matching up nicely, okay? You can see they are matching up, so I don't need to pin, pin, pin because they are matching up. So I just pin them at the middle. And remember, I moved away from the lining okay so i'll just go to my sewing machine and sew it right now with the seam allowance that i have i'll sew it and the lining is out of fit so i'll do that and i'll quickly show us okay guys i've joined them both together okay i've joined the lower skirt to the upper bodies now so this is what we have after joining them together so i'm going to flip it to the wrong side okay so we can see what we have okay so this is what I have on the inside for the wrong side. So remember, I moved the lining away. I didn't sew it together with the lining. I only sewed the skirt, the main fabric together with that. So I'm going to be trimming all of this bulk here, okay? So this is very important. I'll get a really sharp scissors to trim this out nicely. so after trimming it down the next thing you want to do now is to attach the lining to it okay so i'm going to now be joining the lining to the other lining to the lining of the skirt to close up all of this rough edge that we have here now then the last thing to do is to add the zip okay so this is it so if you have any more questions or if you find this confusing let me know in the comment section i'll be glad to answer every of your questions so now this is the upper lining so i'll bring the lining of the skirt now so i'll now bring the skirt lining now i'll look for the middle as well just like we did to the other one so i also look for the middle of the upper lining Okay, that one already has a notch. Then I'll now place them right side facing, okay? Right side facing each other. So I'll pin, pin, pin. So I'll sew it all the way to the other end. 
I'll sew and I'll sew. Then after sewing, it comes down and covers all of the rough hair that you are seeing around there. So I'll quickly do that in the sewing machine. Then I'll bring it back to show you guys, okay? So now we are not sewing the lining to lining. So it's the zip that is going to be keeping all of them together. So remember, we still have the zip area open that is rough, okay? All of this part is still rough, but we are still going to be closing that part. So I'll sew the lining to the lining now, so I'll come back to show you guys. So guys, this is what we have on the inside, okay? After sewing, and I've given it a good press as well, okay? So you can see it's looking all nice and neat. Everywhere is covered properly, okay? So if you find this thing confusing, or if you have any more questions, you can ask me in the comment section, okay? And I'll be glad to answer every of your questions, okay? So now this is the wrong side. So I'll turn this over to the good side. So now this is how the good side is looking as well. Okay, so this is the good side. Okay, and this is the wrong side. Okay, so now the next, the only part where we have the rough edge now is the zip area. Like so, can you see? This is the only the zip area that we have the rough edge. So the next thing that we're going to be doing now is to sew on the zip, okay? So remember, when we sew the tool to the uh, lower skirt, we moved away from the zip allowance. Make sure not to allow your zip allowance, your gathering of your tool to get to your zip allowance area. So this just exactly now is a guide for me to know. So I also did not close my zip allowance at the top, okay? So now we have the skirt. We have the lining and the cloth, so I'm going to open this over like this. I'll pick my zip. So just pay attention to this part. I'll open up my zip. Okay, so I'm going to be sewing my zip first, only to the main fabric, okay? I'm going to be sewing my zip only to the lace first. So I'll place my zip like so. So I'm going to place my zip in here. Can you see? I'm just going to sew my zip only to the main fabric first. So I'll pin that. So as you can see, I moved my lining, the total of my lining, I moved everything away. So I'm only sewing my zip to the main fabric. So I'll pin, then I'll sew. I'll just sew like, I'll sew like four inches below the waistline, okay? From the waistline down, I'm just going to sew my zip like, okay, let me just do five inch, okay? So I'm just going to mark where I'm going to stop sewing my zip, eh? five inch below the waistline. So after the waistline, I'm sewing my zip five inch and stopping there, okay? So I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'm also going to be pinning my zip to the other side, okay? So not gathering your tool up to your zip allowance makes your life easy. So you can see the tool is just staying on its own while you have your zip allowance space. So I'm also going to measure the 5 inch down here where I'm going to be stopping my zip, okay? 5 inch. 5 inch below the waistline. So I'll take this now to the sewing machine and I'll sew and I'll sew, okay? So let's do that together.
So I'm going to zip it up like so, so I can make sure I mark at the waistline because I want them both to align at the waistline, okay? So I'll just mark it so that they can both align at the waistline. I'm using my chalk to mark the waistline. So I will unzip it now. Then I'll unzip before I sew the other side, okay? So I want to make sure they are both laying nice and equally at the waistline. So I'm going to place that chalk mark at the waistline on the other side. So I can continue sewing till I get to the 5 inch at the bottom. So now the both zip is sewn together. So I'm going to be zipping it up to be sure that everything is nice and accurate around there, okay? So just, and remember we have not, okay, everything is nice, you see? My waistline is aligning properly and everything looks good. So if I close this up, and this is what we have. Remember our lining is still out. We have not sewn our lining to the... To the zip here so this is what i have and it's looking good at the back right now so the next thing that we're going to do now is to sew the lining to the zip and we're going to close this up okay after sewing the lining to the zip so i'll open it back again so i'll bring this i don't know if you guys can see it properly here so i'm going to bring this here is the main fabric okay let me see Good. So here's the main fabric. I've only sewn the zip to the main fabric and here's the lining out. So I'm going to now place the lining on top of it and start sewing, okay? So I'm going to start sewing all the way from the neckline to close it up like so. Can you see? Remember, this is our zip allowance. So I'm going to start sewing like this and continue to the end. So that's what I'll also do to the other side. So our zip is only sewn to the main fabric now. So I'm going to now be bringing the lining on top of the zip. Then I'll sew. So you have to be careful when you do this, okay? So you want to make sure this part is also nice and neat and flawless. So here is the lining on top of the zip. So you are just going to make sure you are filling the zip on the inside, okay? So you don't sew too much. So because you also need this part to be closed nicely, okay? So I'm going to just be filling the zip as I go. But I also want to make sure that this part is closed. It's well closed. Also sew and stop at that five inch here. Very important. Don't sew above it. You're also going to stop at that mark. Good. Okay, so I'll turn to the other side now. So 
so you can see what we have so this is the reason why i said you have to be feeling your zip so that it can be really close it can lap properly here okay so if it's not properly closed you will need to like you can sew twice if you like eh so this is what i have here so i can decide to sew again the second time if i feel i still want this to close properly around the zip so that they'll just be seeing only the zip head okay so i'll do the same process for the other side okay i'll repeat the same process like this for the other side and i'll come back to us so guys i've sewn the both side of the zip right now okay my lining is covered at the moment so i'm just going to take out that thread i hope you guys can see this clearly okay so i'm going to zip it all the way up okay so this is what i have at the good side okay so remember all of this part is still open nowhere is closed yet even the tool you can see that the tool is still very much open i've not closed any part yet okay so i'll turn to the good, the wrong side for us to see so this is what the wrong side is looking like at the moment this is the front side of the wrong side this is what it's looking like and this is the back side where we have the zip and this is what it's looking like at the moment okay so everywhere is closed and neat and flawless so now we are left with all of this part okay so we need to close them one after the other we are not going to be closing them together we are going to close them separately okay let me position the camera so see you know we have two lining okay so they are all here like so and even the tool is still open so we're going to close them one after the other so but before we do that we're going to be cutting out the zip okay so now you can see that the zip is still very very long so i'm going to be cutting out the zip so i'll cut out the zip like so so i'll take up the other one then i'll get a strip of fabric okay i'm just going to use that strip of fabric to cover up the zip head so I'll fold this like so. Just watch what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to use it to cover it up in there. It's not as if anybody's going to see the zip anyway, but this is very, very important you do this. Then I'm going to sew. I'm just sewing it wrap just to secure it better, okay? So this is very, very important, guys. But though the zip is going to be inside, but you need to knit in every part of it. So this is what I have at the moment. So now that that is done, so I'm going to place this back like so. So I'll pick up the first lining like this. Can you see? And I'll sew to the end. I'll pick up the second lining as well, right side facing, and I'll sew to the end where the zip will be inside. So the zip is going to be in between the two lining like this. Are you guys seeing this? So the zip is going to be in between the two lining. So I'll pick the first lining, I'll sew it separately why the zip is here i'll pick the second line i'll sew it separately then now i'll come to the tool i'll also pick up the tool okay so i'll pick up the tool remember from my waistline down to where my zip stops is five inch so i'm going to pick up the tool as well and i'm going to also measure five inch like this 
then I'll start sewing. I'm not going to start sewing the tool from the waist. I'll measure five inch. I'm going to let that open because of the zip. Though because it's all gathered and full, they are not going to see that that part is open. So I'm going to measure five inch like this on my tool before I will sew and close it. Remember, we have two layers of tool. I'm also going to be sewing those two layers separately. Here's the first layer and here's another layer. I'm going to sew them separately as well. Everything will be sewn separately. So I'll go ahead and do that right now, one after the other. So if you still find this a bit confusing, just ask me any more questions that you have. I'll be glad to answer every of your questions. So the last thing to sew now is the tool, okay? So I'm going to pick up the tool like so. I'm going to open it up. Remember, we have two layers. So I'll pick up the first layer the first step so I'll measure 5 inch around there so I'm going to be measuring 5 inch around there below the waistline so then I'll sew Okay, now that I've sewn one part of the tool, I'll pick the second layer as well, okay? I'll pick the second layer of the tool. I'm going to also measure the same 5 inch down. So I'm just going to use this one to measure it where I started sewing from. Good. So... found it okay then I'll sew like so so everything is sewn separately guys everything is sewn separately nothing is sewn together So guys, now that all of the layers are sewn together uh, separately, so this is the first tool, this one is sewn, so I'm just going to trim it a little bit down, okay? You just trim it a little bit down. Make sure not to trim your seam, okay? So I'll just take my time to trim all of that. So this is the first tool, and this is the second layer, okay? So we have the first layer sewn separately, we have the second layer sewn separately, okay? So, and we also have the two lining, okay? So, this is the first lining where the zip is. I'm actually going to be giving all of this part a good press, okay? So, this one is sewn separately, and the other one is also sewn separately. I hope you guys are seeing this, okay? They are sewn separately from each other. So, this is what I have here, and the tool comes down to it, and nobody is even going to know that there's any sewing whatsoever around that part, okay? So everywhere is looking so nice and neat and flawless. Okay, so this is what we have. Can you guys see? So this is what I have at the back, okay? So I'll turn the wrong, uh, the front side for you guys to see. So you can see, even with five years, I was able to achieve a really full board dress, okay? So this is how our dress is looking at the moment. So 
here is the wrong side okay you can see even the wrong side can be worn as well <laughs> the wrong so i'm going to be pressing everywhere to keep it more down so the last thing that is left for us to do here the last thing that is left for us to do is to m the bottom okay you can see that i've not m this bottom i'm going to be m the bottom after m the bottom the two i'm going to m them separately as well then i'll come back to my tool and i'm going to trim it really nicely okay if you have a weaving machine a nice weaving machine you can weave this bottom if you don't want to aim it because sometimes circle can be so difficult to aim okay you don't want it to your aim it to have any bubbles so you can just use a weaving machine to weave it nicely with the same color of thread so now the after aiming the uh, lining on the inside the next thing i'll do is to come over the next thing i'll do is to trim my tool to make sure everything is equal and nice okay? hi guys so here is the finished look of the baby bird dress that we just made like i said it's not a dramatic one but you can see that it's still looking really full even with five years so i'm going to be showing us the back of this dress around here so this is so cute and it's looking all nice and flawless so if you have any more questions feel free to ask me your questions in the comment section and i'll be glad to answer every every of your questions okay so here's the back remember i said i wanted a deep v back so this is it guys so i'm sure that after this class you are going to be able to make a really perfect and flawless baby dress on the inside okay so thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for coming along with me on this one and i'll see you guys in my next video so bye